What if Deku had Soul Leveling? Part 1. So, let's begin. Whenever Deku is born, he was a everyday ordinary kid in a very unordinary world where there is magic, quirks, and also gates, aka portals to dungeons. Along with this world's hero society splitting into two parts, the hero part and also the hunter part. Deku, from the age of, well, 0 to 4, he is just living out life just as usual. And instead of Deku's dad just going off to USA and something like that, in this what if, Deku's dad was actually a hunter who did his best in different dungeons to help himself and his family. However, in a certain dungeon, Deku's dad was unfortunately killed. And Hasashi Midoriya died whenever Deku was just born. Meaning Deku never actually met his dad face to face, only seeing pictures of him around his house or his apartment. Now, Deku, around the age of 5 to 6, he would have started to notice that his mom, Ingo Midoriya, is, well, a bit strange. And by that, I mean, she sleeps almost all day. And whenever she's awake, she still seems tired. Deku, at the time, thinking that this is just because of his mom's workload, he didn't pay much attention to it until whenever Deku was 6 years old. Where whenever Deku came back from school to his home, he found his mom lying on the ground unconscious, which caused Deku to immediately call the ambulance. And after arriving at the hospital, the doctors after tending to Inko, would have told Deku that, unfortunately, his mom has went into eternal sleep. Just so you know, eternal sleep is a coma, meaning Deku's mom is not dead. I repeat, Deku's mom is still alive. She is just in a coma, unconscious. However, Deku, thinking that the doctors just told him that his mom is dead, he would of course been devastated. But the doctors would try to reassure Deku that even though his mom has went into eternal sleep, she still has a chance of waking up, even though they know that she never will. Because ever since eternal sleep appeared around the world, those who went into it never actually woke back up. So yeah, the doctor is just is basically trying to calm Deku down and giving him false hope. Well, somewhat of a hope because the bill for keeping someone in eternal sleep alive costs a lot. And I mean in the thousands at least for each month. And just as the doctor cold-bloodedly suggested that Deku basically give up on his mom, that was when Mitsuki and Bakugo would have arrived. Them being worried that Inko was brought to the hospital. And by them, I mean mostly Mitsuki. Bakugo was just dragged here. Now, Mitsuki asking for what happened, the doctors would have explained to her the situation. To which she would have been enraged hearing that the doctor suggested Deku to give up on his mom and leave her to die. This causing the infuriated Mitsuki to suggest that she will take care of Deku along with the medical fees of keeping Inko alive which the doctors would be 
a bit surprised by. Deku, knowing that this can allow for his mom to live longer, he would of course ask for Mitsuki's help. But while Deku was asking for Mitsuki's help, Deku would also know that he is, well, selfish, since right now, he is adding more burden to Aunt Mitsuki, or just Mitsuki. Because if she does take Deku and Inko in, then she will have to feed one more mouth, which is Deku, and also pay thousands of dollars to keep Inko alive. And to Deku's surprise, Mitsuki actually takes Deku in and along with Inko. Now, after being basically adopted by Mitsuki, Deku still being quirkless, he would have continued his school with a new goal in mind. Instead of becoming a hero just like All Might, he would become a hunter. The reason being that even though hunters' pays are lower than heroes, they can actually earn more than heroes if they go into more dungeons and bring back more corpses. However, there is just one problem. To become a hunter, you need to be at least 18 years old, which Deku is definitely not. So he just continued to put his focus in school while just waiting for himself to become 18 so that he can try to become a hunter. As for Bakugo, his goal will have been the same, to become a hero that's better than All Might. And you may think that Bakugo will bully Deku more since he's living with Deku, but that's actually sort of not the case. The reason being, Mitsuki. Now, well, time skip to around the time of Deku being 13 to 14 years old. Oh yeah, by the way, Bakugo is in UA, and Deku is just in a random school. Along with that, I have one question for you guys, which is basically in every single one of my what if. Who should I give one for all to? Since Deku is literally a god, he will definitely not get one for all. So leave a comment in the comments down below to tell me who I should give one for all to. And if you don't tell me who I should give it to, I'm just gonna give it to Bakugo, just saying. With that out of the way, let's just continue. It was dinner time, and Deku was eating dinner with Bakugo, Mitsuki, and Bakugo's dad, as that was when Mitsuki would have asked Deku what he wants to become when he grows older, since unlike Bakugo, he is not going to a hero school. To which Deku just tells Mitsuki that he will become a hunter. And just as Deku said that, Bakugo would have spitted out all of the rice in his mouth. Him saying, You? Becoming a hunter? Oh please, you don't even have a quirk. And don't get me started with magic. Mitsuki immediately saying, Katsuki, shut up. Bakugo immediately saying, What? What are you gonna do, old hag? To which Mitsuki would have just Punch Baku in the head while saying, Shut up, Katsuki. Otherwise, you can say goodbye to both lunch and dinner for the next five months, along with your allowance. This, of course, shutting up Bakugo. Mitsuki turning her attention to Deku, she would have said, Izuku, are you sure that you want to become a hunter? It's very difficult. Even if you have a quirk, that doesn't mean that you can become a hunter, right? So, why did you choose to become a hunter? You can just become a hero, just like Katsuki. Or even just a police officer. Deku saying, No, Amitsuki, I, I want to be a hunter. Since I don't have a quirk, I don't qualify to become a hero. 
And the only other job I can think of that can earn a lot of money is being a hunter. It has the potential to earn even more money than being a hero, which is why I want to be a hunter. Mitsuki saying, Izuku, why are you so fixated in getting more money? Life isn't just about getting money, you know? Let's say you earn a lot of money. What are you gonna do with it? Deku saying, uh, I'm going to repay the debt I owe you, Aunt Mitsuki. Mitsuki being a bit confused as Deku would continue saying, uh, Ever since I basically asked you to adopt both me and my mom, we've been a burden to you for the last six years. So, me earning a lot of money is the least I can do to repay this debt. Mitsuki, hearing this, she would have had a little smile on her face, as she would have lightly hit Deku in the head, her saying, Idiot, you don't owe me anything, Izuku. Did you think that I don't know what I signed myself up for? Unlike someone, you're a very sweet kid, Izuku. Now, after this conversation and finishing dinner, Deku would have went back upstairs where he's going to do his homework, watch the news, and maybe even read some books. And whenever Deku turned on the TV to watch some news, he would have noticed that the Hunter Association changed the age restriction of becoming a hunter from being 18 years old to 14 years old, with the reason of the change being a lack of hunters and that they need more hunters so that they can clear more gates which are happening and appearing around the world more often. Deku, realizing that he can now become a hunter since he's about 14 years old, he would the next day go to the Hunter Association building to try and get his rank and or register as a hunter. As whenever the next day arrived, Deku, after returning home from school, he, with the excuse of going out for a jog, would have went to the Hunter Association building, where he would try to see if he had any magic so that he could become a hunter. And just as Deku got there, he would have saw a group of people over there and lining up to become a hunter, and or get tested so that they can become a hunter. Which, whenever it was Deku's turn, he would have just went up to the machine, put his hand on the machine, and, well, wait. However, after waiting for 20 seconds and the machine not having any reaction, Deku would start to worry, him thinking, Oh no, please don't tell me I don't have any magic. If I don't have any magic, uh, I won't become a hunter. Please tell me I have magic, please. Deku, while he was begging for himself to have magic, the machine would have started to react, and a word would have appeared in the screen that is in front of Deku. It's saying, User contains magic. Magic rank. E. Deku, seeing that he is qualified to become a hunter, he will of course be thrilled. As Deku, after the test, he would have immediately tried to fill up the form which would allow him to become a hunter. And after completing the form, Deku would have just went back home. But while Deku was walking back home, he would have saw Bakugo with Kirishima. As we'll cut to the first day of UA, with the members of Class 1A being a bit different. And by a bit, I mean like 30 to 40 percent. As for the ones who are not in class 1A, they are number one, of course, Deku, and then it is Ochako Uraraka, Momo Yairozu, Shoto Todoroki, Mineta, Ojiro, and maybe even Asui. Yeah, let's say Asui is not there as well. As for the reason for why these seven people are not there, I'll tell you about it when you meet them. And by that, I mean in later parts. 
Now, the first day of Class 1A and or UA would have been the same, with Aizawa telling Class 1A to go to the playground and or the training ground, he would have told Bakugo to do the ball throw first, since Bakugo did get first place in the entrance exam. Him doing the ball throw just as usual, with the rest being the same as the anime. Well, mostly the same. Along with those six other classmates being different, Mineta would have also been expelled from UA, which is why he is not in Class 1A. Now, we'll go back to Deku, where he went back home while basically hiding from Bakugo. As about two days later, a mail coming from the Hunter Association would have came in the mailbox, which Mitsuki seeing the mail, she would of course be confused. And whenever Mitsuki opened the mail and or opened the letter, she would be, well, let's just say her face looks like a volcano that's erupting. As when Deku returned home from school, he would see Mitsuki telling him to come sit down the table. Him being a bit confused, as he would have saw Mitsuki holding the mail that came from the Hunter Association. Deku immediately realizing what Mitsuki is about to say and or what she is going to talk to him about, he would have just walked over to the table and sat down. As whenever he did, Mitsuki would just ask Deku if he knows what he just did, to which Deku just not saying that he knows. Mitsuki, after hearing that, would have shouted, Izuku, do you know how dangerous it is to go into a gate? You're going into a place that's unknown to most people, if not everyone. What happens if you die and your mom wake up? What am I supposed to say? Oh, Ingo, I'm sorry, your son is dead. Here, take his money. Is that what you want me to say to her when she wakes up and you die? Deku, shaking his head, he would have said, No, that's not what I want. I... Mitsuki saying, Really? Then what do you want, Izuku? If you want to just earn money and repay your so-called debt to me, then there are many, many other ways than to just become a hunter and risk your life for just a bit more money. Him standing up from his chair and saying, I know it's dangerous. I know I need to risk my life against the unknown. You think I don't know that? I know that. Deku, after saying that, he would have walked away from his seat and towards Mitsuki. Him trying to take the letter from Mitsuki's hand by force, which actually works since it actually caught Mitsuki off guard. Deku, after doing that, he would have started to walk towards the stairs. As Mitsuki would have also got up from her seat and say, Izuku, even though I'm not your real mom, I still view you as my own son. Please, don't, don't get yourself killed. And you know I worry for you, right? Deku saying, Yes, Aunt Mitsuki, I know. But this is my life, which is why I'll walk my own path. As Daku would have just walked up the stairs and into his room. Mitsuki still worrying for Daku, she would have just sat back down onto the seat that's next to the table. And whenever she did, Bakugo would have just walked through the front gate and or the front door. Him saying, Hey, old hag, are you there? As we'll cut to Daku inside his room upstairs hearing Bakugo and Mitsuki arguing with each other. While he is hearing all of those noises, Deku would have been thinking on how he should at least get stronger. Since, you know, to be a good hunter that can earn money, they need to at least have lots of fighting experience, and if not, at least the experience of running away. Now, about 4 to 5 days later, Deku would have been on a bus towards a gate. To be more specific, a E-rank gate. And whenever Deku got off the bus, he would have saw about 10 to 15 people there. Including Deku that is. 
with an agent walking up to Deku asking for his hunter ID card, Deku would have showed it to him as he would have joined the other hunters. The other hunters, noticing Deku, they would have said, Hey there, you're a kid, right? Um, yes. First time? Yes. <sighs> I'm not a babysitter. Why is there so many kids here? With another hunter answering that question with, Come on, don't be like that. We all have a starting point. It's just that now they're a bit younger. How old are you? Um, I'm 14 years old, sir. Oh, then really younger then. Do you know how to fight, kid? Um, I watch videos. I think I do. Uh, uh, do you have any weapons, at least? No, but do my arm counts? Uh, never mind, we are babysitting. Yeah, like I said. As that was when, about like a meter away, a man with a sword and shield, along with some armor, would have shouted that the raid is about to begin, and that to gather around him. Which everyone does, as the man would continue saying that he will be the leader for this raid, and introduce himself. Him saying that he is a B-rank hunter, and his class is a tanker. And if you don't know what a tanker is, he basically is just there to draw the attention of the enemy and block their attack, while his teammates attack the enemy. Now, after his introduction, he would have asked everyone if they are ready to go through the gate, to which everyone is, as they would have walked through the gate, where they would find themselves inside a cave. And while everyone is moving forward and following the raid leader, Deku is kind of falling behind. Him being the second furthest away from the raid leader, with the first being, well, a girl. Deku being Deku, he would of course be nervous around a girl, as he would finally have enough courage to ask the girl for her name. Which the girl just said that her name is Ochako Uriraka. Deku hearing Ochako's name, he will of course tell Ochako his name as well. Them becoming friends, I guess. But their conversation would have been cut off by a group of goblins. The raid leader yelling, Everyone, attack! Which everyone does them having to charge at the goblins, slaughtering them one by one. As for Deku and Ochako, Ochako would have asked for Deku to draw his weapon, to which Deku just put up his arms. Ochako asking, y you're a brawler? Uh, no, I didn't buy a weapon. Oh, here, take this. Ochako lending Deku her sword. Deku, taking the sword, he would have said, uh, uh, thank you. But Ochako, while pointing behind Deku, would have just shouted, Midoriya, behind you! Deku, being a bit confused, he would have just turned around while holding the sword, as he would have saw a goblin jumping straight at him, it having to crash onto Deku. Deku, being on the ground and underneath the goblin, he would have tried to push the sword into the goblin's face to try and stop it from eating him. However, the goblin, while using its other hand, or well, both of his hands, it would have tried to slash away at Midoriya, which does work since they're very close. Deku, while shouting in pain, he would have tried to push the goblin back and get back on his feet. Deku saying, Get off of me! Him pushing the goblin away with all his might. And as the goblin was stumbling back, Deku would have gotten back up on his feet. Deku having to charge at the goblin, he would have tried to jam his sword into the goblin's chest, if not its head. But just as Deku was about to reach the goblin, the goblin would have just walked out of the way which 
caused Deku to miss his attack. The goblin, after dodging away, it would have grabbed a rock from the ground and basically jump onto Deku and jamming the rock into Deku's back. Deku, while shouting in pain, he would have landed on the ground while being beaten up by a goblin. But after 3 to 4 more hits from the goblin, a fireball would have been fired from within the raid team, it having to hit the goblin away from Deku, as the mage who fired that fireball would have came running towards Deku asking, Hey, hey, you alright? Deku looking towards the guy who just saved him, saying, Uh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. As Deku, while saying that, he would have felt that the pain from behind his back is starting to fade, him being a bit confused. As he would have looked to his left to see Ochako using her magic. Ochako, while healing Deku, she would have told Deku that she is a B rank healer, and that she can heal wounds from anywhere from being a normal scratch to severe wounds, just not severed arm or severed limbs. And as Deku was talking with Ochako, the mage would have finished off that goblin. Deku asking Ochako, Wait, if you're a healer, then why do you have a sword? Oh, that, I just got it from the ground. In the last raid I was in. As the raid would continue with Deku having to get injured every single time he fight against a monster. And in the end, Deku could not even kill one monster. Not even one. He's basically being carried by his entire team. Now, I believe that this will be a good place to end this video. If you guys want part 2 to this what if, then help me reach 30 likes on this video. If it does, then I'll try to record and post part 2 to this what if as quickly as I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!